Hi everyone, this is Mr. Amonso. Today, I would like to talk the HKDSG sample paper, Mathematics Compulsory, Paper 1, Session A2, Question 13. Please read the following message. Uh, this is the foundation of this whole series. If you don't have enough time, please pause the video. Otherwise, we go to the question. For question 14a, it is asking the L2 equation. For linear equation, I would like to have you to organize your knowledge in this structure shown on the PowerPoint. Remember that every linear equation originally comes from slope. From slope, we have three common standard form. And I got a typo in here. Excuse me. And now the typo has gone. <laughs> All right. Okay. Whenever we talk about two lines on the coordination plane, if they are parallel, then their slope are the same. If they are perpendicular to each other, then the slope product would be negative one. And this is our case. So first of all, we need to find the slope, and then with the given point, we can use our point slope form to form the equation of L2. Okay, we found the slope, and it is easy because we, what we are doing is just a simple substitution. This is the end of question 13a. We need to go to question 13b, but before we have to do a little bit review, or I will help you to organize your logic structure of uh, loci. There are six common loci for our syllabus. They are the locus of a general point as a fixed distance. From a fixed point is a circle. Actually, for these six loci, they are all talking about keeping same distance. In the first case, we have one general point and one fixed point. If I need to keep the distance between these two, then the general point will run a locus of circle. Similarly, if we have the fixed line, the loci would be a pair of parallel lines, a segment, this is a pair of parallel uh, segments, and a pair of semicircles. What about a general point and two fixed point? And this general point is at an equal distance. Then the locus would be a perpendicular bisector. From two parallel lines, is a line parallel to them. From two intersecting lines, the locus would be a pair of angle bisector. So, you just need to be clear what kind of thing is fixed. And then, you need to do is write down the red words from this PowerPoint because all the locus are very easy to describe. You, you would either write circle, a parallelize, uh, angle bisector, perpendicular bisector, and that's all. Okay, so let's go into the question 13b, part 1. Now, we got a general point called Q, and we label the locus of Q with our Greek symbol, or Greek letter, which is gamma. I've already shown you that 
if we have a uh, two fixed point and I got a general point which needs to be at the same distance between these two fixed point, then the locus would be the perpendicular bisector. And I have shown you on this graph. As far as you can see, beside uh, gamma is a perpendicular bisector. It is also parallel to L2. Okay. So this is what we need to describe in part B1. What about part B2? We need to find the equation of the gamma. I have to uh, emphasize that 9,4 is not the point A. They are different. If you don't understand it, please read the question very carefully. It never says that 9,4 is point A. Don't mix this up. So if I need to find uh, the equation of this gamma, I would use slope point form. Why? Because I already got the slope because I know the slope of L2 must be equal to the slope of gamma. And uh, actually, I got two ways and I will show you. Uh, the one way is to find the find a point of gamma and then it should be the middle point between A and B because gamma is an angle bisector. Finding B is not difficult because we have already got uh, L1. So B is still 4. And uh, this time I would like to find the intercept because if you can look at it, look at the graph, then you will find there is a pair of similar triangle. The reason is AAA because both of them got the uh, 90 degree right angle. And because this is a parallel line, the x axis is a transversal, so we got a corresponding angle, they must be equal. And so we have the similar triangles and then I can use the point here to help me to calculate. First of all, I need to know the distance between uh, B and the y-intercept of L2 and then I got a point C or the y-intercept here and obviously it is the distance between C and B is 8 because 12 minus 4 is 8. Half of it would be 4. So I got the midpoint here. Why is this middle? Okay, because the ratio of uh, this pair of similar triangle, the smaller one, the bigger one, is 2. As we can see from the blue line, if this is k, the, uh, if the smaller triangle's base is k, then the bigger triangle's base is 2k. So the ratio must be 2, and that's why I use the midpoint of BC. I got a point, I got the slope, so it is easy for me to find the equation of gamma. Okay. As I said, I stress multiple thinking. Let's see what I do in method 2. In method 2, as I said before, I can find a line, uh, sorry, I can find a point on gamma. And this point is not difficult to calculate by, uh, by calculator. Of course, it is difficult to calculate uh, uh, by hand, but if you got a calculator, you should have a program for simultaneous equation, then 
this method is not difficult to be done. I show you. First of all, I have to find A. And then for the middle uh, for the midtone of A B, which is M, I got a point, I got a slope, so I can find out the equation of gamma very easily. There are third way and this way is more popular than the uh, method two. Again, we need A, we need point A coordination, and we also need point B coordination. Okay, as is already said in the in the question, A Q is equal B Q, and Q is a general point. So I set the coordination Q as x y. With the distance formula, I can also calculate the equation of gamma. This is the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching it. Uh, you are welcome to send me an email for any question of mathematics. If I have time, I will reply. Goodbye and have a nice day.